Hello, everyone. In this part, we're going to start to talk about how we can favorite a tweet. So this is what we need to do as a feature. So, so we're going to do this in uh, two parts. So the first part is going to be about talking about what we're going to do. And the second part is going to be about cutting this, this thing. And we're going to do this in the server first. So uh, what I'm going to show you, this is what we have right now. So we have a user collection. And we have a tweet collection. This is what we have. You know, in NoSQL, we have no way to do kind of join table stuff like you can do on with SQL database, like Postgres or SQL, etc. So, how can we do the the how we, can we do the favorite tweet? You have two kind of way. Some people are gonna say. Why just don't add inside the user maybe a field uh, called, uh, I don't know, like a favorite, favorite tweet, uh, maybe like that, and just put an array of object where here what we're going to do, it's, um, it's add the ref and schema type object ID from the tweet. This is a way. I think, like, we can say this. I mean, this is a good way. This is a, a, a good kind of pattern. All the second people, what they're going to do is they're going to do here. They're going to make an array here of uh, user favorite or something like that. And here, that's going to be the array of the ID of the user. So this is another way. So this way, the tweet can have the length of how many favorite, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. But the thing is, I don't think that can scale. The thing is, I don't know if you know, but MongoDB, you don't have uh, infinity um, size for the document. The document have a maximum size, and I think this is 16 megabyte. And the thing about that, it's you just need to make that a way that's going to be easier for you to um, to like to, to scale. What I mean by that, it's, I don't think this way that's gonna really scale. Why? It's because my user, if I start to have a lot of stuff in my user, and now it's easy because we have tweet, but maybe we're gonna want user to follow another user, etc. etc. So if the user follow 1,000 people and he have favorite uh, 10,000 tweet, what are we gonna do? You're gonna have a big user object that's gonna be crazy. We, we're gonna lose yourself inside that. So I think the way I'm gonna show you, it's surely not the best way. I mean, I'm new in programming. I learned programming in the past year. So uh, what I've shown you always, it's what I've learned in my uh, quest to become a web developer. And I really hope you enjoy what I, I can show you. So I'm going to just show you what I, I use on one of my clients before. And I think that helps us pretty much to do what, uh, what I want to do. So what I'm going to show you, it's this thing. We're going to finally create another collection called Favorite Tweet. This collection is going to be like a join table. So what we're going to do finally, it's when we're going to create a user. So we're going to add some code for that. So we're going to create a user and we're going to create his own collection of favorite tweet because we know inside this application, the user can favorite tweet. So as the user create himself in the sign up request, we're going to create a table called favorite tweet. This table is going to be first thing unique. Uh, for the user so the user can have only one favorite table and you're gonna have one by default So it's gonna be an empty. It's gonna be a table with an empty array of tweet by default After that we're gonna add an index an indexation on that so that's gonna make uh, the request for the get uh, uh, the request for the query uh, faster so MongoDB gonna index by default MongoDB index only the ID, but you can add another index and I'm gonna add the index of the user ID because when we're gonna search, I don't care about the tweet. I care about this user, I search this tweet, uh, follow this tweet. So when the user is signed up, we're gonna create a favorite tweet in the same time and we're gonna put his user ID right there. After that, we're gonna start that with an empty array of tweet is gonna have a reference for the other tweets, <coughs> sorry, for the tweet collection. So my plan about that, what we're gonna do finally, is we're gonna create another resolver. This resolver gonna reg uh, take the ID of the tweet who the user is liking, and when he click on that, 
we're going to first thing search if the user have already this tweet ID inside the array of tweet right there. Why do this? Because some people are going to say, oh, create a favorite and an unfavorite resolver. But why? I mean, you can do kind of if request because if you don't do this if request, you, you need to do this if request somewhere. You need to search if you have it already. So by doing this, what I want to do is my favorite tweet resolver gonna first thing uh, find the favorite tweet collection coming from the user. We're gonna get that coming from the, the, the user context. After that, we first thing search if the ID is present inside this tweet array. If it's not present, we're gonna add the tweet inside the array. If it's present, we're gonna just remove it. So that's gonna be an unfavorite. But this is not, this is not done. Here you see we have a favorite con. So what we're gonna do, it's when I favorite my tweet, I'm gonna call this tweet with the function. I'm gonna create another static function. We're gonna finally increment the number here by one if the favorite is true. But if the favorite is false, I mean uh, we have a favorite before and we need to unfavorite, I'm gonna remove one from the favorite. So this way you need to 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 you, you can follow like the, 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 the number of favorite con. Why we want the favorite con is because we want to show that to the UI. So I hope you understand what I just say. I favorite tweet resolver. My tweet ID get at the bottom with my user context. I search the favorite tweet collection from the user. Every user gonna have one because we do this in the sign up. After that, we check if the tweet ID we just favorite is already in the tweet. If not, we're gonna favorite it and we're gonna increment the favorite con. If is already, we're gonna remove it from the tweet array and we're gonna un, uh, re remove one from the favorite con. But, <laughs> this is the last thing, uh, please stay with me. We're gonna add another feature too. When we do the resolver right now, so if I go to my Visual Studio Code, if I do to my resolver, uh, right now, uh, not my resolver, my schema. Right now, when I did my resolver, my tweet, this is what I got. I got the ID, the text, the user, the favorite con, the create ad, and update that. But what I told you in the past episode is, always remember the app is for the viewer. So only one people. So what can we do here to make this app easier for the, for the, like the front end developer to get the data. So what I mean by that, it's, you know, we're going to need to show the earth, like, you know, the icon earth is going to be red if it's already light and blank if it's not. So I don't want my friend and dev to like get the array of tweet and do the, 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 the logic about that. I hate when I got this type, uh, kind of stuff when I'm the front end and my back end, it's just too easy to make stuff. I really hate that. I like when my back end give me access to everything. And what I mean by that is one of the things we're gonna add here, we can already is gonna be is favorite who's gonna be a Boolean. So this is what we're gonna receive. I'm gonna send that for that for now. So what I mean, it's now when my friend is gonna receive the array of tweet, he's gonna have a, a Boolean called is favorite inside that. So the is favorite gonna be True if you have it inside your favorite uh, tweet uh, uh, collection and false if not. So this way my friend don't need to do almost nothing. He show red if true, he show blank if false. And when you're gonna click the like, we're gonna add that with subscription. So that's gonna always follow with the true and false. Plus we can do this with optimistic UI. So you're gonna see it's gonna be pretty simple for the front end. We do a lot in the back end to make the front end easier. And this is what I really want you to understand. It's we we need to put this way because we want to have the life easier in the front end. Now with every kind of application we build right now, it's a lot of UI stuff. We do a lot in the, the front end. And I just think sometimes I already I get some back end developer uh, before who give me a project. And I was like, I'm, I was almost doing everything. I mean, I was almost doing 85% of the job of everything. 
And if I was to doing this well, I would have done this with Firebase and don't have a backend developer because it didn't do nothing. What I mean by that is I want you to see then you can remove some complication just by building a better server side stuff here. And you're going to see with the is favorite here, the front end is going to love it. You're going to just see that also that's going to be helpful. So I hope you enjoy. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to record the second one. So I hope you enjoy and we talk later. Bye.